<clears throat> Everybody, welcome to my latest Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another tutorial in Cubase Pro 10. A couple of days ago, I released a remake of a NoFX song that I did here in the studio just for kicks. And I was talking about the drum programming and I asked y'all if you wanted to see a more dedicated video on drum programming. And so uh, a few of you said yes. So today I'm gonna give you five quick tips and tricks on programming drums in Cubase. So let's get into it. Okay. I'm gonna try something new. Normally when I load an instrument, I'll just hit, I have a hotkey for instrument tracks, but I'm gonna try this here in the media tab. You can load instruments now uh, and effects and everything, just drag and drop. So we'll drag in a groove agent and we'll open it up and just put in a kit real quick. And one thing that I've been playing around with, I used it in the no effects song is, I think we always had SE Studio Kit as our acoustic kit, but they've added this one. And I, it sounds pretty good for an acoustic kit, I like it. So I'll just use in the initial patch without any of its processing applied. So now that it's loaded up, we can start talking about my five tips and tricks for editing in the drum editor. So the first thing you'll need to know is that you'll have to get to the drum editor and we'll make a four bar loop here. Now, if you click into it, what you'll see is the key editor and uh, if you don't have drum maps, you can set up a hotkey or you can go to MIDI open drum editor. I believe that control R was the old key command for open score editor, but I work in the drum editor way more. So I switched it to open drum editor. So there's no drum map loaded, but it'll load the GM map if you hit control R uh, or you set that set that hotkey. Uh, and that's in the MIDI menu, MIDI open drum editor. Now, the cool thing about working with Groove Agent is that since it's a Steinberg product, you can just load the drum map from instrument. Now, since this is my working template, I have all the drum kits that I typically use loaded into my template, but uh, you wouldn't see these normally. You would just see G no drum map, GM map, and then create drum map from instrument, and that's what I'll do. And as you can see, it loads in it the kit SE. And if only every drum library were like that, it would be so dope. So let's talk about drum maps real quick. Here in the drum map, you can see that uh, you can preview all of these by clicking here. And it's important to note about drum maps is that they come by default labeled as you would find them on a keyboard. So. So the problem with having it laid out like it is on a keyboard is that things aren't exactly the way you want them to. So I, a good rule of thumb for when you start a project is you can organize your drum map however you want and it won't change the key bindings. So if you notice, here's the hi-hat tip, here's the hi-hat close, here's the hi-hat pedal. And in between we have toms, toms D, C, B, and A. Well, if we want all these toms to be together, we can just move them in the drum map. And then before you know it, all your hi-hats are together, all your toms are together. And uh, you can do the same with crashes. And these hi-hat shanks and this hi-hat pedal, you may want the hi-hat pedal up with your hi-hat tip. And it doesn't come that way by default because of how they lay it out on the keyboard, but it's a good rule of thumb to, if you're going to spend a long time programming drums, to really think about how you want your drum map laid out because it'll be how you work. So that's tip one, get your drum maps in order, get them the way you like. If you wanna save them, you can. You can just go back to the drum map, drum map setup, functions, save, and then you'll save it to your hard drive and then you can load it the next time or it'll save with the project. So if you like the way that you've laid out a drum map and you wanna keep it that way, you can always save it. So now that we've covered drum maps, it's time for tip number two. So the second tip is the Alt key. The Alt key turns your uh, cursor into the drum key instead of switching back and forth like this or using the hot key, which is what, seven or zero? Zero, it's zero on your keyboard. Zero and one, the furthest ones apart. You can just hit the Alt key, oops. You just hit the Alt key and it turns into a drumstick and you can enter notes. And then you can also, when you hold the Alt key, delete notes. 
So let's put in a quick pattern here. We'll do the Anthony Soprano. So if you hold the Alt key and drag, it'll, it'll add notes along your quantize. All right, and then we just play the beat, boop. And then another uh, way to use the Alt key is if you highlight notes, you click on them and then you hold Alt, you can copy your pattern over. So very quickly, we have four bars with a one bar intro of, um, And as you can see, that second snare is a 16th note late. So we can highlight all of those and we can hit Control and then the left on your key, uh, keyboard and it'll put things into position. So if you wanna move everything forward a quarter, uh, a 16th note, whatever the quantize is set to, Control works. Now let's say you enter a Tom D when you meant to have a hi-hat tip. You just hit up and down on your keyboard to move that stuff. So if we want to do uh, quarter notes on the hi-hat, we'll do that here. We can switch the quantize to quarter notes and hold the Alt key and And we could do a big crash at the one here. So, uh, so I put that in wrong, but I can move it down with the uh, move it down with the arrow keys, and then we have and before you know it, we have a pretty rock solid. <laughs> groove. If it's a boilerplate, it's just because that's the way things go. So that was number two. Use the Alt key to enter notes and to duplicate sections. So you click on notes you've selected, hit the Alt key, and you can duplicate. And you can use it to enter notes. So the Alt key is great. We're going to move on to number three. And number three is Quantize. You're going to be using Quantize all the time. Now, I think that this comes out of the box, but if it doesn't, I have my Control Plus and Control Minus set to change quantize, so I can do it easily. As you can see right here. And the quantize panel is right here, and you'll be using it a lot, especially for things like swing. If you're doing hip hop, you always kind of want to put swing on your 16th notes just to make it sound cool. And I mentioned this, you have tuplets here, which can really spice up a beat. I mentioned this in my video, you can randomize things. So we'll just grab everything here and we can randomize by a tick or two, and you'll notice then the quantize panel, it changes. It's 1 16th R2, and if you hit Q, things will be slightly off the grid. Uh, you, you know, zoom in, things will come in a little bit early, but as a word of caution, I don't typically do the first one because if it pushes it early, it pushes it out of the event and then you don't hear it. If anyone has a good workaround for this, please let me know. So now, I mean, it's a little bit randomized and... And maybe it sounds a bit more human when you randomize just a bit. Honestly, I feel like it does make a world of difference. Now we can see what swing does. I'll switch it to eighth notes, I suppose, because there are... Oh, we'll do 16. So you can hear it on these. We'll switch the swing. And I've done a whole video on what swing is. It's sort of, uh, we'll do 50% swing. So if you notice the second beat in the 16th notes is pushed back a bit. So we'll hear the those, that's the swing. As opposed to, so it's good to keep in mind, uh, what swing does and what it can do for you. Give it a little bit of spice to your beats. Now, also before I quantize, one thing I do, and this is a, just a bonus tip, is I'll select everything with like Control A. I don't even know if you need to have it selected, but I go to MIDI, 
functions and delete doubles. See, the problem with this drum editor is if I put this in here and it's like, oh no, I wanted that here and there's two, all of a sudden this ends up being twice as loud because it's two samples playing. And it's, it's difficult to see in the drum editor. So I always uh, go to MIDI, functions, delete doubles, and then you'll see now there's only one, oops, here, not, not two. So that's a good tip to MIDI functions, delete doubles. I mean, I could have a, could have a hotkey for that, but I feel like I use it so rarely that it's fi fine to just go to the menu and do it. So three is the quantize functions. You've seen, you know, using tuplets, using swing, using randomization. And of course, being able to change your quantize on the fly with a hotkey is very useful. So let's move on to number four, which is velocity. In velocity, let's take a look at all these. You notice they're all the same. You'll notice that all the velocities are the same and they're all 100 because that's what I have the input velocity set to. Now it goes up to 127. I like 100 because it's a nice medium. I have more headroom to get a louder hit. So just by changing the velocity, we can make it sound more human. I like to do like ascending a velocity on, and you'll see here. And uh, these little ghost notes here, they make a, they make a big difference. Oops, this was supposed to be 100, this one was supposed to be low. Okay. And we can change these. And as you can see, just by changing velocity, you can humanize it more. Now, this is a very straightforward drum beat, and there's not a lot of uh, syncopation or anything like that. But, but just by adding in these little grace notes and adjusting the velocity of something, uh, a lot of times, you know, a drummer will hit less hard with their non-dominant hand. And so that, that's a good one to check out. Like if you think that someone will be playing something, uh, a fill or something, you could have it be hard, soft, hard, soft, hard, soft, or or you can have it ramp up like this, you know? And uh, adding little uh, accented ghost notes always makes it sound a bit more realistic as well. And you'll find a lot of patterns in the pattern banks of Groove Agent. Uh, if you go to this pattern section. And by dragging some of these patterns in to your project and studying them, you can begin to see the basic concepts behind uh, drum programming as a whole. So these have been five quick tips, you know, set up your drum map, use the alt key to enter and take out notes, uh, quantize uh, with randomization if you want to and uh, get familiar with quantizing and swing, uh, alter your velocities to make it sound more humanistic and study some of the MIDI patterns provided by Cubase and whatever other drum libraries you may be using. And before you know it, you'll be on the way to more successfully programming drums. So I hope you found these tips useful. Uh, if you have, feel free to like or subscribe and take care of yourselves, everyone. Peace.